but he wasn't the balls and all in this whole awesome. show. Your leisure. And leisure show, that's right. I've got Wayne and James here, of course. And uh, this whole show you're going to see uh, tonight or Saturday at 4 if you're watching today uh, is coming to us from Mandra and Maritana Wildlife Park. That's one of the places. That's good. Let's call it Maripana Wildlife Park. Oh, uh, uh, we're going to be talking to them. Wayne, you're going to have a chat with? I'm going to have a chat with some lovely people here that uh, are actually some of the people that are the owners of this beautiful park that you see here. Fantastic. And also he's going to be talking to the mayor of uh, Mandra, having a chat with Keith. Yeah. And uh, James, you're having a chat with? Yeah, uh, I'll be uh, speaking to the people at Dudley Park later on for Lawn Bowls. And uh, while I'm here, I'm going to speak to the people for the Veteran Car Club. That's and I good. cannot believe I remembered that. I, I can't, can't either. either. And uh, <laughs> we're also going to the Toucan Club, which the is Toucan a, Club rocks. A really rock and rolling uh, nightclub, great place. And we spoke to Stuart, the manager there. And also going to have a chat with Dave Holland, who's in charge of their uh, the tourism down for the whole Peel region. Yeah. And I uh, hope you enjoy the show. We're going to be bringing you all kinds of sights. And you and know what we're going to do also, Moose? We're going to peel away a few layers of manja for you so that you can understand a little bit more about this vast area. Yes. Because yes. it is the Peel region. Is that it what you're trying to do? Amazing how we stuck <laughs> that in there. All right, well, let's get the uh, balls and all rolling. And uh, I'll be having a chat with uh, someone from here, but first but of first, all, first, we're going to go to a story I did on Dudley Park, Lawn Bowls. So uh, check this out. That's right, everybody. We're still down here in Mandarin. We're having a great time. I'm here at Dudley Park Bowls Club, and I'm speaking with Don Nash. How are you, Don? Morning. How are you? Great. Now, Good. can you tell me a bit about just the sport of bowls in general? Well, the sport in bowls in general is virtually open to anybody to play. We've got people aging from about 16 to through to their high 90s. Yeah. And they all play and enjoy. A lot of them play a lot of social bowls, and a lot of people like to play very competitive pennant bowls. Yeah. But uh, the club itself is open to anybody, so if anyone's interested, come down and see us, and we're quite yeah. happy to accommodate them. For those people who don't understand, what does pennant bowls mean? Pennant bowls is when you play for your club. You're picked in a team. The team usually consists of four teams of four, which is 16 to each level, and they go from level level one to level five. Yeah. And play Saturday afternoons, and we all play for our club. Yeah. And, and that, rather than playing for yourself or trophies or anything, it's yeah. just a club event. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you guys obviously go away and play other clubs and stuff like that? You get yeah. to get around? Have yeah, we get around, uh, travel. A lot of the, our guys are old country people, so they like to go back to their mm. own club and, and play bowls over there and get around. And you meet a lot of people, and they travel far and wide. Yeah. And uh, what initially got you started in bowls? Oh, I'd, when I'd finished uh, com like physical competitive sports, I was looking around for something to do, and a few friends uh, playing, and they just invited me up to play, and uh, I've been going ever since. Yeah, and you just uh, come down and have a great time. Yeah, enjoy it. It's a great social event. There's good people. Uh, we have a lot of fun. Yeah. But like I said, it's very competitive in other areas. Yeah. But uh, no, it, it. I think the enjoyment of, of meeting a lot of people. Yeah. Makes it that, that's the thing with any sport you're in. You know, you get down, you meet a lot of people, you have a lot of good fun. And you go out and you can win stuff if you do well, of course. Oh, if you're lucky enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, that's a bonus, really. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, if you win a few games, you pick something up, but yeah. uh, the rest of it's terrific. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing really interesting, I've never seen it before, is uh, behind us, which will go in a little while, the, the ground. Can you tell me a bit about it? I've never ever seen it like this. Usually you see a nice cut grass and a lot of maintenance and always yeah. working on it. Can you tell me about what's behind well, us? Well, this is a new type of uh, synthetic <clears throat> uh, grass that we use. Well, I shouldn't call it grass, I guess. It's <laughs> synthetic, which is a plastic yeah. compound. Uh, yeah. It's something new for us because we looked at the uh, high costs of running grass greens and we're getting very expensive. Yeah. And we have restrictions on the amount of um, fertilizers and, and chemical compounds we yeah. can use. Yeah. So we decided to investigate in this and we've gone into this. Yeah. We've actually just finished everything and we should be playing it in the next couple of weeks. All right. So I guess the proof's in the pudding is how good it is. Yeah. Now, uh, we were talking before, you said you play on a wet surface. You actually uh, yeah. get it wet? Once it's all ready to go, you can uh, water it and it makes it faster. And the beauty of it is because during the winter, if it's raining, you can stop play for 10 minutes and then uh, go straight back out and play again and you don't lose any pace of the green. Yeah. So it's a very versatile compound Yeah. and uh, we're quite excited with it and hope the, it does the right thing for us. Yeah. So have you actually played at other clubs and you sussed it out from there? Or? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we went around to other clubs, played some games, looked at the different types that you get Yeah. and uh, we've decided on using this one. It seems to be a better all-purpose uh, for what we require and yeah. uh, it's uh, put a lot of work in and cost a yeah. lot of dollars but we hope uh, everyone gets a lot of enjoyment. Yeah. 
Now, also, we were talking that the way they load is quite interesting. Uh, they use porous, do they, you said? Yeah, well, what they use is a, it's a porous compound. It's actually a slag from uh, alum, aluminium and the way it's made. And it sets itself rock hard, but it's porous so that when you put the water on the compound, it, yeah. it goes straight through and it doesn't sit there and rot. So awesome. you've got to be very careful that you use the right sort of water yeah. that we don't have a build-up of uh, calcium or anything like that in it. Yeah. Now, can you show me a few tips? I'm keen to have a go. Well, I don't know if I'm the right one, but we can have a <laughs> bit of a drip and see what happens. All right. Well, uh, stay with us. Let's go have a go. See how bad I am. All good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Don, we're down here on the court now. Uh, can you tell me a bit about the yeah. ball and uh, yeah, yes, James, the way they're um, shaped? Different shapes. The, this actual bowl here is actually an old-type uh, Henselite bowl. Mm -hmm and it's what they call a maximum bias which means that it'll take a lot of grass to come back to the kitty yeah. and nowadays they have all different types of weights and sizes some are minimum bias some are red some are green they're yeah. all torts and stuff so it's going up market a little bit yeah. as far as promotion goes yeah. but uh, it, it's I guess with bowls it's like anything else if you've got a good eye and a little bit of an understanding about yeah. uh, sport you'll soon pick it up and yeah. there's no problem with it uh, most of the time that we play here, nearly always play competition bowls in whites. Yeah, that's uh, another question I was going to ask. You always watch it on TV, they're always in white. Um, is that yeah. something you always have to wear? Yeah. or All competition bowls or all sanctioned bowls by the league are all in white. Local club events that are social on a Saturday morning, Sunday mornings, you can wear mufti, which is just normal clothes, but you have to wear the same type of uh, footwear. Yeah. Okay, now uh, can you show me how it's done? Right, mate. From the expert, Don. Well, I don't know about the expert, but <laughs> you can have first guide. The little fella on the inside, yeah. that's the bias that turns in. Okay. Okay, so if you grab the bowl similar to that, Okay. stand on the mat and walk forward and deliver. Yeah. There we are, away you go. Okay, so... You get him behind, yeah, mate. In behind like that. Yeah. Keep him like that. Where the kitty is, you want to yeah. aim to the left of that a little bit. And you stand just go up and yep. like that kind of thing. Yep, and give it a bit of a push. Give it a go. Yep. Away Here you go. we go. And he's miles off! <laughs> oh, no. Now you see how it finishes with the bias? Yeah, yeah, yeah it definitely starts so you, going in. Yeah, so you need to be out about eight feet before wow. you can finish off. Well, Don, I had my first shot, and uh, as we can see, I'm miles off. Now, we were talking a bit about the uh, little fella on the ball. Can you uh, just explain yeah. a little bit more about it? On, a, on all the bowls that you, you uh, use and play with, there's a, a motive on each side, and there's a small motive, mm -hmm. and a large weight on the other side. Yeah. The small motive always is on the inside. Okay, so that always so, points towards so, where you want to go. Yeah, where it is. So that's the bias. So if you want to go backhand, mm -hmm. the bias must be there. Yep. If you want to forehand, oh, gotcha. turn the bowl over, yep. the bias that way. Okay. And that's the same as if you deliver. You deliver yep. out to the bias of the line that you think so the bowl will call back in. Yeah. Now, um, with uh, all different kinds of people and stuff, do you have different weights for different people? Like you obviously, you get used to a certain weight and yep. stuff like that? Yeah. There is all different weights for different people. Quite obviously, a large man with a large hand would use, say, a number seven. Yeah. Or a light-framed lady that's small would use number two or a number three. Yeah. So that whatever feels comfortable in your hand, yeah. you should always use. Yeah. You should not try to use one above yeah. what you are comfortable with yeah. using. Now, uh, from that uh, great shot I put out there before, what did I do wrong? Basically, you looked at the kitty and, and delivered the bowl to the kitty. Yeah. So you should be looking at a line, yeah. which is approximately six to seven feet to the left of the kitty if you're delivering on the backhand, and let yeah. the bias of the bowl bring it back yeah. to the so kitty. So you kind of throw a little bit out. Out that way and bring it back. So if you'd like to have a go again. I definitely will. But right before I do, yep. uh, if anyone's interested in coming down and having a go, I mean, it's a great sport, and obviously every club's looking for new members. What is the number? Yeah, for Dudley Park Bowling Club, it's 9535 2695. And you can get the girls in the office and they're quite gladly to uh, send you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Usually to myself, because I'm the bowls captain, or to the president, which is Ken Matthews. Well, uh, we're just about to go. Thank you very much for talking to us. It's been an absolute well pleasure. Thank you very much. And this one, we'll get it. So uh, stay tuned and follow. Thanks a lot for that story, uh, James, and uh, thanks a lot to everybody down at Lawn Bowls. Uh, we had a fantastic time. They actually showed us a little bit of uh, their skills, and uh, it's a good, fun, clean time, and uh, if anybody wants to get down there and do it, uh, we definitely suggest you do. Now I'm here with the mayor of Mandra, uh, Mr. Keith Holmes. How you doing? Fine, thanks, Wayne, and welcome to Mandra. Glad to have everybody here today. Oh, good. I mean, that's pretty good, even being glad to have Moose here. Now, um, basically, if you could tell us a little bit about this building that we're standing in front of and uh, how long has it been going? 
Uh, this is the Mandra Performing Arts Centre. It was opened in June 1997. It was uh, largely funded by the then state government but furnished by the council. It's been a great success. We now get uh, international shows. Any show that comes to Perth, or most of them, certainly come to Mandra. So if you live in Mandra, you don't miss out on anything. Oh, wow, yeah. That's, that's probably why half the show should have been coming to Perth and come to Mandra now. Now, can you tell us um, a little bit about the event that's taking place today? Uh, today we have a local performance at South Pacific. Uh, we have some really talented young people in town and we have some very talented uh, directors and producers who uh, they've put on a, range, a, a variety of shows but today well, I think we have a sellout today. Wow, I mean we have actors like Moose and people like that have been acting. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, well, you, you get that. I, I can assure you the singing you'll hear in the, in the performing arts centre is better than that lot. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot better than that one, huh? <laughs> We've been telling him that for years, but he still has to go. I mean, you've got to hear him do Jared Junction ad. It's pretty fantastic. Now, um, what other events are on today? I'm, I'm really, I believe you told us a little bit about the Crab Festival that you previously had. Yeah, we had the Crab Fest at the end of February every year, which is a, a great event. A whole range of activities and uh, uh, you... you a fantastic arrange, uh, array of food. So whatever you want to eat, there's some of it down here for the Crab Fest. We get about 30 to 40,000 people down here and it's a great weekend. Wow. And uh, I'm just looking around here at this marina. I mean, when I was here in 89, um, none of this was here um, and it was about 19,000 people. How many people do you have now and what do you think has contributed to the uh, influx? Well, we have uh, over 50,000 people now in the area. Uh, what's contributed? Well, it's such a great place to live first of all and uh, we now have uh, all of the modern uh, facilities that people who live in the city expect and uh, it's as I say it's a wonderful place to live. Yeah I mean I was looking around the marina I even saw a place that uh, I've uh, funded myself called Simos you know being Wayne Simmons you know have a restaurant called Simos so you know things like that you know man just really picked up. Now um as basically, um, what other events are going on in Mandra? I believe you said something about a new marina that's going to be constructed? We have uh, a marina underway. Uh, stage 2 was completed and opened last year. Uh, stage, uh, stage 1, I should say. Uh, stage 2 is uh, currently underway and the whole project should be completed uh, towards the end of next year. Wow, so a lot has happened since you become mayor in 1995. I just thought I'd get a big plug in there for you. Keith? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I can't claim the credit of doing it all, all myself. <laughs> no, there are a lot of people, and it's not just the council and the, and the government, but uh, it's the community itself. These sorts of things don't happen unless you have a huge amount of support from the community, and we have a fantastic community down here in Mandra. Yeah, well, I mean, it's definitely a beautiful place and growing all the time and stuff. Like, we were talking talking a little bit earlier people were saying you know back in like say 89 you could get a house down here for say 35 40 grand now you'd be looking up what upwards of about 150 just for uh, yeah, the last, the last six months property prices have risen uh, quite uh, quite dramatically, but as they have in the metropolitan area. But you can still get a good uh, three-bedroom home in Mandra, brick and tile, in certain parts for uh, 100000 120000 wow. But you've got to get in quick now because the prices are going up. That's right. Get in quick. Get in now. As Big Kev would say, I'm excited. Now, um, is there anybody else you'd like to thank? Well, I think I've covered everybody when I say when I need to thank the community because it really is a fantastic community. We've got a whole range of volunteer groups down here and anybody, uh, you know, we've got a lot of caring people and people who don't sit back and wait for things to be done, they get out and they do it themselves and ready to give a hand to everybody. It's a wonderful place to be. And as you can see, Amanda, it's fantastic down here. And since it is, on behalf of Balls and All and the Balls and All staff, we'd like to present you, Keith, with the old Balls and All t-shirt. If you notice, it's by Time, Time Glow. That's fantastic, Wayne. I'm not sure that I'll wear it in council, though. I, do, I think it might clash with the chain. Oh, you think it might clash with it? I think it would be fantastic. You have a few chains, a few earrings, necklaces, and you get in there, you probably get a little bit more done. Maybe on you, but not on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Keith, and uh, definitely wish you every success, and it's an absolute pleasure. <laughs> and the crowd's going crazy. And now... Since I'm down here, I might as well check on my restaurant, Simos, and uh, we're going to go get some food, and we'll be back 
after the break. Welcome back, everybody, and I uh, hope you're enjoying the Mandurah Show. We're happy to be down here. We'd like to come a little bit more often. And we're even trying to uh, get someone from here. They'll uh, be doing reports now and then, so it'll be fantastic. Uh, I'm here at the uh, Mandurah Visitor Center, the uh, Peel Dis Discovery Center, if I can get it out. That was actually opened by the uh, councillor at the time, Keith Holmes. He was the mayor of Mandurah, who Wayne just spoke to before the break. I'm speaking now with Dave Holland. Uh, Dave, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you going? Now tell us a bit about uh, your uh, position down here. Okay, I'm uh, in a voluntary position as chairman of the Peel Region Tourism Association and we've got one full-time uh, executive officer and one part-time person and what we do is coordinate the marketing of uh, the Peel Region uh, to the rest of Australia and, and internationally uh, and the visitor centre, which uh, we're outside of, uh, looks after promoting to the public of Perth. So uh, we, we work very closely together to promote this really exciting region. It's fantastic, of course. Now, uh, a lot of people in the city uh, do come here, we know, but uh, there's a lot of people also who might want to come down here. What kind of things can they do when they're down here in the, in the Peel region? We're not just talking about just Mandurah, but in the Peel region. Sure. Well, Mandurah has been a day trip destination for years and years. You know, generations of people have come down for their holidays just on the weekends. But uh, the Mandurah in the Peel region has got a whole lot more to offer than that. With the amazing waterways in Mandurah, uh, the great estuary, uh, with uh, the doors will cuts open it up to a, a great whole new world of crabbing and fishing in there now. So there's a lot more places to go and see around the waterways of Mandurah and of course it's getting really developed as a, as a holiday place with plenty of places to stay. But coming on into the winter time, uh, it's nicer to get out into the, some of the forest areas like dwelling up uh, where you can get in front of a, a log fire in a chalet and just enjoy some of the forest areas uh, and even go a little further out to Boddington where there's some real f nice farm stays uh, and you can go out there and, and stay on a farm and see how it all works. And when the Peel region... I know that there's a lot of people who'd like to see Wayne on a farm because, uh, <laughs> you know, that way you can pin him in and close the gate. But, uh, and also to talk about dwelling up, we have been there a few times. It's fantastic. You can go down and you can even camp near the river. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of nice swimming areas in summer and everything else, so beautiful place down in, uh, in Dwelling Up. Sure, and even um, you know, a little bit further from here, but closer to Perth, is uh, Serpentine Jarradale. That's in the Peel region as well. And there's a whole lot of walk and, uh, and cycle trails that they're, they're building up there. Of course, there's a Hotham Valley Railway that goes through from Pinjarra. So there's an enormous amount to do in the, in the Peel region. Winter time is some of the best time to, to get outside of uh, the normal places you come to when you visit Mandurah in the Peel. And what about uh, early spring? We get the wildflowers? And... Sure, it's very diverse. Uh, the wildflowers here tend to be a little earlier than, than the northern ones, so you can go down to Yelgarup National Park uh, and uh, and walk through there and see the, the thrombolites, which are living rocks. They're very unique. There's oh, they're only... down there as well, are they? Yeah, there's oh, only right. two places um, in the southern hemisphere they occur. Uh, and you can go down there and, and uh, wander around the, the lake, go through the bush, the national park, uh, and see the wildflowers. There's some wineries you can stop off at. So there's a, a great deal you can make a, a tour, include a lot of things in the Peel region. Now, I uh, mentioned Yalgar up also too, there's a nice caravan park down there as well, the Eco Park. Uh, sure. It, so people, if they wanted to uh, actually come to Mandra but actually want to go mainly in that area, they can actually go to the Yalgar up Eco Park, can't they? Sure. Well, as you know, I'm involved in, in that. It's a it's an accommodation resort and we've built it to to be like the beach shacks of the 1950s on the outside but with four and a half star luxury inside. Now what would you, if, as uh, involved with the tourism, what would you say is one of the most exciting new things to happen down here? Well I think the uh, in Mandurah, the uh, the new marina yeah. and uh, that, that development that's starting off there, it's, we've got the magnificent boat club there and a whole lot of marina facilities and soon there's going to be restaurants and cafes and just announced there's a, a new development uh, in the centre of Mandurah starting that uh, Cape Bouvard are doing uh, and the city of Mandurah has helped them to, to get that started and there's going to be cafes and restaurants and, and uh, bring a whole another new excitement to the centre of Mandurah again. 
come down and have a look now. If someone wants to find out more, can they ring the uh, Tourist Information the Centre? The best place to ring is the Manager of Visitor Centre. The telephone number there is 9550 399. 9550 399. 399. Give them a call, uh, or if you're coming down, it's almost on the main drag as you're coming in on the right hand side. Is the building just be behind us here and it's uh, a great place, very helpful, very friendly people and there's lots of different brochures about different things. And also uh, if you want to go down to Yalgarup and have a look, give the Yalgarup Eco Park a call. Thanks for talking to us today. Thank you. Great. Thanks for coming down to Manger. Thanks a lot. All right, we, we'll see where we end up from here. We're here at Rushton Park and uh, we're watching the Peel Thunder play. I'm speaking with the general manager for the Mandra Football Club, I got it right. That's correct. Wayne Barden, how are you, mate? I'm very well, thank you, James. Great. Now, can you tell me a bit about uh, what your role is with the club? Uh, as general manager of the, the whole complex as such, um, sort of, I'm responsible for overseeing the total operation. Uh, so that involves not only Peel Thunder, yeah. but also the Mandra Mustangs, which is in the Peel Football League, yeah. and uh, then also the sort of bar and function side of the club as well. Okay. Now, also, we were having a bit of a chat off camera, and you were talking about the juniors. They're doing really good. Yeah, look, we've got um, some really good, talented juniors within the region at the moment, mm -hmm. and we've got high numbers of junior footballers. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we've, well, prime example is we've actually currently got five in the state 16 squad really? and uh, three in the state 18. Yeah. So, yeah, that's our highest number, so we're on the improve all the time. Yeah. I suppose that's great. I mean, you're obviously hoping they can move into the next side and keep growing with it. Most definitely. You know, if we can uh, nurture these 16 and 18 year olds and uh, yeah. hopefully they'll flow on and uh, play league football for Peel Thunder. A yeah. uh, prime example of that is young Daniel Haynes, who's been developed by the club, yeah. uh, played his first game for the Dockers today. Really? So, uh, yeah. That's, sort of, that really makes you feel good, really, doesn't it, when you see someone like that go all the way? It does. You know, in the club's short history, yeah. uh, Daniel's already been drafted. We've had mm -hmm. Dale Walkinshaw last year on the Fremantle Dockers rookie list. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Hill was drafted to the West Coast Eagles. Yeah. So, you know, we've, we've, had fairly, yeah, we've had fairly good success in a short period of time. Yeah. That's great. Now the, the young fellas like coming through the juniors, where do you actually get them from? Most of them are from the Peel region as such yeah. and that encompasses sort of the teams that play within the Peel Football League. Yeah. So like Quinana, uh, Mundijong, down to Harvey and Waruna, yeah. out to Pinjarra yeah. and then sort of, and as far down to probably as Bunbury. Yeah. 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 And like are they scouted? Like they look for players or how yeah look they... yeah we've got um, people that uh, go to the various leagues within the uh, Peel Football League and yeah. uh, sort of watch players um, watch games and obviously look at the better players and uh, give them an opportunity to yeah. progress to waffle football yeah and um, how long have you actually been involved here yourself Oh, this is my fifth year now yeah. uh, involved with the club, yeah. but as general manager... Did you ever get out there and have a go? Well, I was going to say, as general manager, I've only been involved for about five months. I've actually uh -huh. been a player yeah. with the league side for the last four years. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I've sort of uh, now had a change of yeah. focus. Thanks a lot for that. Now I'm here with uh, Peter German, uh, head coach of the Peel Thunder. How you doing, Pete? Good. I like the, I like the heading head coach. Yeah, you like that, Pete. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> now, Pete, um, today's game, big game for you. Um, um, how long have you been coaching with this team? Uh, well, this is my first season. Um, uh, after uh, the season ended at West Coast last year, I was no longer sort of required there, I guess, in, under the uh, regime there of Ken Judge. So when he moved on, so did I. And uh, this job happened to come up. And uh, next thing I know, I'm coaching Peel Thunder. So I've had it for about... Um, about six or seven months now. Okay, now um, before we get into the actual Peel Thunder team, um, for the one or two people that might not know exactly who you are, can you tell us a little bit about your actual um, football background? Uh, just from Victoria, from uh, the northwestern suburbs around Essendon area. We won't hold that against you. No, no yes, I'm, <laughs> glad. I'm glad. But uh, yes, I just played junior football and went through the uh, North Melbourne system there, the under 19s, with well, the Kangaroos now, and uh, played 11 years there. And, uh, three years down in Tasmania playing coaching, then two years at Hawthorne as assistant coach, two years at West Coast assistant coach, and people wow, are so right at the moment. That's a big background in football. Um, how are the uh, young guys, especially, responding to uh, your new coaching philosophy? Well, yeah, I guess it's been a lot different to what the players have been used to. I, I guess, and, it, and it, I picked it up pretty well straight away, the fact that it, it is a, a bit of a country football club, but. Uh, 
and with a lot of young kids, it was probably, I guess, important that we actually took the next step and to really become a lot more professional, a lot more committed to the uh, to uh, waffle football. And uh, even though we've only won one out of our four games, we've been very competitive. We've been in a situation to win, uh, you know, at least three of those four games. So. But the young kids have been excellent. I think we've got a good crop of uh, young kids and if the club can uh, survive, which um, I've been assured that uh, they you know, have a very good chance of, um, I think the club certainly in two or three years will be uh, a benefit from the fact that we have got such a young group of players. Okay, now, I mean, right now, you had your magic wand, things are, if things were just the way you wanted. Um, what do you think the club really needs to step up to go to that next level? Why caring? Yeah, just keep away from people's wife. Um, <laughs> other than that, um, um, what would you think they did? Oh, look, we just need experience. Yeah. We really need experience. Um, you know, we're fifty percent of our side this week is twenty-one or under. Wow. Um, you know, and that that again, that probably hurt us last week. The fact that we were five, six goals up. Um, you know, ten five minute mark in the third quarter and to get beat by four goals again just showed inexperience. So inexperience is uh, very important. Uh, but I guess if I could really ask for one more play to be a, uh, a, a midfielder who can really get the ball and use it well. Okay, and so you're, uh, in terms of your forwards and goal kicking and what have you, um, how are you guys faring on that end? Yeah, look, we haven't kicked as many goals as we'd like to, but I, I think we've got the potential to, to be a high-scoring side with Scott Simister, who um, I believe is still probably a couple of weeks away from his best form, and, and uh, at the moment he's leading the goal kicking, but he still probably hasn't been in the form that he would like. Balraj Singh, centre-half forward, he's kicked six or seven goals, but he's mainly played a centre-half forward, but he's been good in that area. A good little crummer we like. I think a guy who can kick two or three is like a full material. He'd, okay. be, he'd be very handy for us. And, uh, so we've got to try and develop a couple of players who may be able to fill that role. Now for a young team like this, is it harder to teach some of the young players on the defensive end, is it harder for them to pick up or getting your goal scores and... Uh... and uh, the, the, the main area that we focused on right from the start was Peel Thunder has been the worst defensive side in the last five okay. years. There's, um, statistics prove that over the last five years we've had more goals kicked against us than anyone else in all of those five years. So we as a, certainly I as a coach and the players set that as one of our goals this year to really rectify that area. And so far we've gone a bit bit of the way to it, but I think we've uh, we've just given away too many easy goals through through free kicks. It hasn't been our lack of defensive effort, it's been more of our overzealous tackling and at times um, you know, giving away free kicks. So yeah, look, our, our defensive game is probably easier and it ha actually has, well when I say easy, it's, that's easier to rectify than getting uh, players who actually know how to kick goals. Okay, now Victorian football has always been considered basically the mecca or the heart of the start of football, BFL, you know, AFL, what have you. What do you see as far as in the youthful ranks? How do you compare like West Australian players to say the Vicks or Canada? Is there even a comparison yet? Well, the comparison, I think most people who've either been to either states certainly compare the skill aspect of Western Australians, such big grounds. Um, uh, wide open spaces, the players probably, and the, and the weather is more conducive to, to be more skillful than Victorians who probably, even as kids, you, you just get really, it's ingrained into winning. Winning's more important, so not so much how you win, it's just the fact that you win, so we're over here. Look, there's no doubt they, they still want to win over here, but I guess the weather and the lifestyle and, and everything like that, probably the culture over the years has been more conducive to aspect over here. Okay then, okay now specifically you've got this team tonight that you have to play. You can tell us a little bit about them and what do you feel you have to get done? Well the main thing is I think what we've got to get done is we've got to win. There's no doubt about that and I think the thing that you know, I, well, I have uh, really pushed hard with the players this week is, is four quarters. You know, I think our first half last week was exceptional. Um, even our last quarter wasn't too bad. We just fell away for 15, 16 minutes in the third quarter. So we've just got to maintain our work rate um, in, in the, 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 for the whole four quarters. And we're playing a side that's very capable of well, having lost a game yet. So our defence and our, just our work rate to either win the ball or stop them from scoring goals has just got to be super high. And uh, if we can do that, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we'll at least be uh, very competitive, not come over the points. Well, good on you. And thanks a lot to you, Peter German. You've been excellent for the sport, and hopefully you can get these young guys across the line. Yep, looking forward to it.
Thanks a lot, Wayne, and uh, thanks, Peter. And uh, as you can see, the result is just fanatical. I mean, they scored a goal in the first 10 seconds. How do you think it's going? Oh, we've had a really good start so far. And uh, as we can see, we've got five goals on the board, and Subi haven't got one yet. So, yeah, yeah we're really wrapped with the start to the game so yeah. far. So it's going to be three for three, we think? Or? We're hoping so, yeah. There's yeah. been several people saying <laughs> they believe in threes whenever the Dockers win, Peel win. So, yeah. yeah, we're hoping that's the result for us. Oh, that's always good. Now, if anyone out there wants to get some more info about the club or just wants to find out anything about it. Is there a phone number they can call? Most definitely. They can call the club here and the number is 9535 yep. 3448. And yeah, we'd be more than happy to discuss uh, the sponsorship, membership, uh, any interest of the club yep. whatsoever. No worries. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure coming down and uh, let's see the boys go all the way. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we're going to go to, to a break. So stay with us after these short messages. Once again, and we're at this club called the Two Can Club, and there's people doing stuff around me, so we're gonna find out what's happening. Now, uh, <laughs> let's jam the posse, baby. <laughs> okay, I think they're feeling pretty good. Um, your name is still Michelle. Michelle, and and Sarah Train. And what's your name, little guy? Uh, John. Oh, John. John Holmes? That's the one, baby. All right, now. Now, um, actually, what usually happens here? How long has this club been going? Uh, uh, it goes on and off for about five years, and it usually closes down, and then it comes back up again. Can you ladies from Manda show us your dance steps? Can we see what's happening? Yes, you know All right, James, can you show us some of your dance moves, James? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, this is a family show. <laughs> I do the running man, but it, you know, it's kind of like the eight. What do you like so much about Mandarin? Oh, we like the alcohol. Oh, oh they have, do they have that down here, do they? Lots. Yeah, I'm uh, one of the guys down here too, again. And hey, what are your favorite sports? Uh, then the guy freestyle and Muay Thai kickboxing with the oh, Bob Jones right, Corporation. Yeah. Yeah, we cover a little bit of the uh, Muay Thai. It's a good sport, great sport. Yeah, it is, uh, especially one of the trainers called Sam Richardson for uh, Waikiki. And uh, we train Mondays and Wednesdays, 6.30 to about 8.30. Muay Thai, then Zendo Kai Freestyle. Do you know the phone number if someone wants to find out about it? Uh, I don't know. Oh, that. They can contact you? Uh, you can contact us at uh, Rand Avenue at the Waikiki uh, family and... Sports Centre, uh, Sam Richardson is the uh, the head trainer there, third Dan. What are we doing? Will you be my girl? Absolutely not. Hello, what's your name? Uh, my name's Helen. Helen? Yeah, and your name? I'm Mr. Moose. Mr. Paul's and all. I see you watch the show all the time. Oh, I, can't, like, I, I, I tape it. I tape your show. It's so good I tape your show. And are you a local manager or girl? Uh, yeah, you can say that. Yeah. I'm like the only female bouncer in Mandra. No, I'm here. Having a beer with my buddy Clayton, who plays for the Manda Magic. All right, he's excited. He must have went to big. He must have went to big camp school. Now nah, you doing? Wow, well, yeah, we did all right, but yeah, we'll get him next time. All right, then. I mean, I know you guys. This is your first year in the SBL. How you finding it so far? Yeah, it's good. Everyone's ripping me. I think I'm the oldest rookie of all time. So everyone's giving me a bit of stick, but yeah, we'll get him. We got another superstar. And your name is still. How you doing, mate? Right. Good, man. Now, what's your name? So the crowd, the two people in Perth that don't know you. Uh, Dom Rizzi, mate. Dom oh. Rizzi. All right, then. Now, um, I know you was averaging a boatload before tonight. What were you averaging before tonight's game? Uh, 27 a game, 131 points. Woo! What's your name? Christian. And what's your name? Alyssa. And are you having a great night tonight here in the two games? Yeah. Oh, we got a couple of absolute honeys over here. How are you doing? What's your name? Rose. And your name? Renee. Having a great time down here at the Two Gun? It's not bad. Two Gun Rock. How you doing? What's your name? Sandra. You having a great time tonight? What's your name? And Melissa. And you guys having a great time tonight or what? Yeah. yeah. Woo! Oh, how you doing? I'm not too bad. How are you? What's your name? Baby. Oh, good stuff. You having a good time? Yeah. What's your name? Lana. Rose. And how 
are you finding the night tonight? Well, it's average. Average? Yeah, very average. But uh, I'm here. No, you're here, so it's magnificent. How are you doing? Yeah, how are you doing, mate? I'm having a fantastic, brother. Having a great time? I'm having a ball, brother. Balls and all. How are you doing? Good. What's your name? Cassie. And? Cassie. Oh, my God. Two Cassies. How are you doing, lady? Oh, better now. Now we're speaking to uh, speaking to these lovely ladies. Uh, what's your name, ladies? Tisha. Yeah. Emma. Having a great night? Yep. Yeah. Always uh, come down here to the Tucano or where do you go? What? You always come down here to the Tucano or where do you normally go on Saturday night? Oh, 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 oh. What's your name? Wait up. Wait up. You having a great night? Yeah. Yeah. Good night, yeah. Good on you, mate. Woo! I'm speaking with you. What's your name, dude? I'm a bright light. Are you having a good time tonight? Oh, that's right! What's your name, dude? Nick! You having a great night or what? Oh, unreal! We've got a band, their name's Ben and I. Plug it, buddy, plug it. Black Cobbers Tavern, oh, Saturday night. Oh, nice. Come and see us, everyone, we're unreal. Acoustic Trio. How you doing? Good, thanks. Hey, what's your name? Yeah. 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 Yeah
So how are you finding it this evening? Oh, well, packs, mate. This place goes off, mate. I've been here six months, mate. Every Saturday night, this place cranks, mate. Heaps of girls, heaps of guys. All right, as you know, we've been having a great time here at the Toucan, and there's a reason for it, and the guy who's uh, revolutionized it, put it all back together, because all you manager people know it kind of disappeared for a while, and the guy right here kind of got it all rocking and rolling again. I'm talking to Stuart. Hi, Stuart. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. How you going, Moose? Good, good. Tell us a bit about the Toucan room. Well, the Toucan, we revamped it, gave the club a theme, uh, which is a South American Latin kind of feel to the room, decorated the room that way. Got Jennifer Lopez in and uh, Shakira. Yeah, we ran Latin dance classes on Wednesday nights. Oh, People right. come down, we have instructors from Perth, they do the Latin dance classes. A bit of the Lombardo and stuff. Yeah, the Lombardo, the salsa, the whole lot. Fantastic. And then on the uh, Thursday nights we do a mix-up where we bring DJs down from Perth and some international interstate DJs are coming as well. Excellent. And then uh, Friday is a big uh, mix-up, sundown, sundown a session uh, from 6 through to 9 where we've got nice prize drinks and everything. Saturday is the dance night. As you can see from tonight's episode, everyone's having a great time out there. Rocking and rolling. So it's not just a nightclub, it's you, you're doing all kinds of other things as well. Yeah, well that's it. We've got away from the old theory of nightclub and we're a club. We do a lot of other things. We're running sundowners, we're putting in a teppanyaki barbecue out the back. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so there'll be food available at all times. Now something I really like about it is you've got not only the, uh, the dance area, the nightclub, you've got an outside area where people can go out and get a bit of fresh air. And then you've got another bar as well over there. Uh, uh, it's kind of all glassed in. Yeah, that's the VIP bar on the far side. Which oh, see, we didn't go on that part. It's only for yeah. VIPs, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's welcome for anyone. It's available for functions and everything. But we try to cater for everyone. That's why we've got outdoor areas, indoor areas. We've put in a lift for the disabled, so the disabled are able Fantastic. to entertain themselves in the venue. Fantastic. So you thought it through, not just open the doors and say, come and dance. There's things happening. I really like the idea of the Wednesday night, the, uh, the Latin dance. Yeah, it's all something new for Mandra, and I mean, my experience, I've been around Australia and in Scotland doing clubs. Um, for the I'd say Scotland, years, so. Wayne will try to do a Scottish <laughs> accent. I uh, know, it's a bit hard for me as well. But yeah, we just brought all the experience and everything back to Mandra and tried to set up a venue which is a little bit more and up and above of what a nightclub is expected to be. Well, we spoke to everyone, they say it's great, they're having a good time, what they like about it too is it's just kind of like a real fun atmosphere, which is what you want. And uh, now, someone out there, a lot of people out there saying, well, we can learn uh, Lambada or, or whatever we want to learn. How do we find out about it? So is there a number they can actually call? Yeah, the best thing to do is to give me a call here at the club, which is 9535-3630. Um, if I'm not here, leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And do you have a web page up and running yet? Uh, we're actually doing the web page and everything at the moment, but you can email us at uh, toucan1, which is the number one, good, good. at iinet.net.com. AU. Okay, great. Great, so if you want to come down and have a bit of fun, you can see everyone's having a great time. And there's a slight, slight bit of uh, beverage intake as well. Not that we, uh, you know, push that away. And come down and have a bit of a go. They have other things. It's not just a nightclub. It's a club, as you say. Thanks, Stuart, for everything. Yeah, thank you, Moose. No worries. All the best. Okay, mate. Not a problem. Now, I'm having a chat with Tony here. Hi, Tony. How are you? Good, good. Yourself? Good. And I've got Tinkerbell here with us as well. Hello, Tinkerbell. How are you? Hi. Yeah, see she so, likes you. Say hello to everybody. Now, we're at the Maripana Wildlife Park, and I'm having a chat with, with uh, Tani here. Tani, tell us a bit about the Maripana Wildlife Park. Well, Maripana's been around, I think, for 20, 25 years. And initially, it was uh, the Deer uh, Park, deer park yeah. as you know, yeah, with the past interviews there. But um, we've come in in the past three months to rebuild the, the whole park, if you will. Uh, it's a little bit run down. Uh, the Prince family still own the park, but it needs a bit of a tickle up and refurb getting a lot of international guests out here and people like to have uh, service as well as something that looks clean and looks presentable. But we've gone away from having little pokey cages, really having it as a free range open kids zoo, patting zoo and uh, things where people can really get their hands on. And, and uh, Yeah, we talked to that. That's the donkey out of Shrek. We've already seen that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And you've got Verdunan, the duck out of uh, Babe, which is down behind. So all the animals that retire from the big international movies, of course, they all come here to retire. Oh, that's good. So one yeah. day, like, James and Wayne will have their own That's pen. it. That's it. Oh, yep. that's good. Yep. Yep. Now, uh, you've actually got a bit of history with doing this type of thing. Yeah, you, the past 20 years. Of, uh, well, not so much for Taronga. Um, mainly overseas, Southeast Asia. Uh, K.O. Bird Park, the Aikaroa of Malacca, the Bird Park, and uh, Bali Bird Park, helping with building them. But uh, also a few other parks here, well mainly in Queensland, also in Victoria, 
Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, I uh, got to say good day to a guy I met a while back named Neville, but I also spoke to a, a teacher named Roger who was here, and he said that he love he actually brings his school students, who's a teacher, uh, here because something he really likes about marijuana is the fact that the kids can actually walk around and touch. Yeah. It's yep. not a case of just looking through a cage. Uh, you've got the big bird uh, cage yes, we, starting we just, here behind uh, us. Yeah, we finished the big aviary here at the back. We've got cockatoos, we've got corellas, uh, we've got some night herons in here. We've got uh, Indian ringnecks and uh, alexandrines. So we've also got the running water coming through. But uh, a lot of these birds are carnivores and uh, we throw in mice and rats and things from time to time to have them a bit of a meal but it's yeah. quite a quite a show for overseas guests because they only hear or, or, or sort of uh, read about these things but when they're coming in and sit here and see what's going on they uh, they get a bit of a shock to see that it actually does happen that these animals now, swoop down now people come here they we see you got the water buffalo you've got of course the deer they're here yep. everywhere yep. you got uh, the donkey the ducks yep. uh dingoes we've, we've seen. got the dingoes up on the uh, back quarters we just finished their display units as well and uh, both the girls appear to be pregnant over there. Good a lot of the us. animals actually are give, donated because maybe the, the mother's got knocked over uh, or something Yeah, like well, that, we're trying our best to turn ourselves into a, a, a wildlife park or a derelict park to try and get animals in. But the law at the moment stands that you cannot show animals that have been donated uh, as a derelict. So uh, we try to get animals oh. in. Get See, them we didn't know about that law because yeah. Wayne and James are on all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, once uh, they're tame, you'll release them back into the wild at the streets of New York or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> now, uh, on the screen, you'll see some details of how to uh, get in touch if you want to find out a bit more about Maripana. And as you're coming down, uh, I think it's it's Ennis Avenue. Isn't yeah, it? it is Ennis Avenue. On yeah. the left-hand side, about I don't know, uh, seven kilometres maybe north of uh, Mandura. <laughs> You'll see it on the left-hand side, and it's a great family outing. Uh, there's uh, barbecues, there's all the facilities. They've got a kiosk here. They even sell ice cream and everything. Now, some people you'd like to say thank you to? Yeah, well, look, a special the real thanks to Golden Bay Fruit Shop, actually, believe it or not. They, they donate a, a uke full of uh, fruit every morning for us to feed all our animals up. So these guys are all fed fresh fruit and veggies every day, if not twice a day. And uh, to a couple of our volunteers, Tim and Ben down here, and uh, we have a great crew of volunteers. But they're... G'day Tim and Ben, how you going guys? These guys uh, go to school still, but we have a lot of school guys who come through and they want to become vets or become something into the animal sector, so they start right now with their training and uh, we do our best to give them a job, starting from raking to uh, combing and cleaning the animals or walking them or feeding or whatever they do. Hands on, yeah. Very much so hands on, but uh, We've all become like a great big family over here, and here comes old Pete. Now look, you've got to get Pete. Here he is. Pete coming in over there, <laughs> trying, Pete. To, trying to hide behind the tree. And of course, you got Tracy there, Tracy's who is hiding, hiding the behind the tree. Yeah, but yeah, we yeah. got her uh, yeah. holding a king uh, yeah, koala, Pete. as you now, can Pete see. Now Pete actually, Pete actually, I, I believe between Peter and I, we design all the cages, and he gets in there, and I just get all the staff muscling along. But Pete actually builds most of the product that you're going to be seeing here, or, or have seen today. So. Uh, the petting zoo, the dingoes, the big cage here, he gets all the boys in working, gets them all happening. And the but, koalas, of course, which is a huge uh, yeah, attraction. Yeah, we well, got, the koalas uh, are mainly with Tracy, as you know, who's hiding behind the tree there. But, yes. Um, the koala enclosure is getting extended, it's getting doubled uh, in the next couple of weeks. We've yeah, got, some of the guys are trying to cuddle the koalas, but I was trying to cuddle Tracy. But Yeah, yeah, know, well, both good. both scratch and claw and bite, and, uh, you know, it's a little bit hard, so not much you can do. <laughs> Not much you can do in that case. She's a little bit like Wayne. She hasn't yet been uh, trained to be released back into the streets. No, but yeah. uh, the koalas are much easier to get out of the trees. Yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. Well, that's it. That's but the, the other factoring point is we've got a, a great big wetlands that we're building down the back here. We're also proposing and thinking about putting a caravan park out through the back here. And I've just spoken good. with uh, Sylvie, who's Mother Goose for the Caravan Association. Okay. And uh, we've got her coming through here to tell us that we should be putting a caravan park out the back there and amongst the wild and. Uh, having people that can come from all over the world and feel that once again back in with Australiana. Fantastic. Don't forget our turf farm at the back here, all right? That's yeah. Pretty, that also helps yeah, us Yeah, wild along. turf. You yeah. can actually go along and touch the wild turf if you That's like. That's it. That's it. Roll around on everything. Well, yeah. thanks for talking to no, us. Anyway. Thank you. Show thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming by and uh, glad it all happened out for you today with the Vintage Car Club as well. Fantastic. Yeah, if you turn quickly to the right, Tracy's there from behind the tree. Look at her. No, no, hand. She's still hiding. Still hiding. Oh, well. All right. Well, look, all are welcome anytime. We're open to suggestions. And uh, the other thing, if anybody or other people have got things that they don't feel they want at their place, like building materials or things that can help us down here, 
greatly appreciated. Or if you have $19,000 hidden in your backyard somewhere. That's it. And you dig it up and say, look, I don't need that. Yeah, give well, to, well give why it not? It'd stop a lawsuit for somebody, wouldn't it? That's right. <laughs> but, That's uh, right. Yeah, or other, otherwise, aside of cats and dogs, but also like donations of any animals and things that people have got. Councils may say, no, you can't keep your rooster here anymore or your rabbit's digging up your neighbour's roses. Um, or else like Vernon and the duck down here, you know, ex-movie stars and things that want to come through. We're uh, welcome. Wayne's going to try to offer you a moose right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know hey, what you're no, doing. You know exactly <laughs> where I was going. But if you want a spare moose, you know, that can produce as well. <laughs> I'm go. almost house trained too. So That's right. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for so talking. So anyway, now once again, thank you, and don't forget the water buffalo down the back there as well. They don't mate with mooses. Oh. Uh, <laughs> They were trying earlier. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, we hope you enjoyed the show. I uh, hope you enjoyed a little bit of a glimpse of Mandra. There's so much more in the Peel region. And thanks to everybody who lives in the area, who's looked after us so well. And i got to say, the uh, the nightclub, the Toucan Club, if you come down here, it really rocks. Yeah, i got to say, I'd like to thank everyone there. We had a great time. All the people were friendly. Um, we left there, I think, about 4 in the morning. It was still hammering. And the management, thank you very much for looking after us. It was great. And I am very sober today. That's good. <laughs> Unlike good. yesterday. That's it's a good. laugh. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of uh, beautiful people down here. and uh, oh, it's, it's a great it's part of the world. A beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful city as well. It's really nice how yeah. Mandra's just come crazy. I mean, no, we don't get to well. come down here that often, but when you do, you just forget about how beautiful it is down here, don't you? Yeah. Once again, thank you to the mayor, Keith Holmes. He played along with us pretty well. He's a fantastic bloke, and uh, wish him every success. And... Uh, I guess a big thank you to the people of Mandra for being very welcoming to us. I think that was great. Very friendly. Hope you've enjoyed the show. And uh, now next week, anybody who likes a bit of Biffo and Baffo. Wrestling. Oh. Uh, ref wrestling. We're going to be bringing you some, uh, the whole show from the Electric Coast Wrestling. It's going to be fantastic. Go away, boys. I'll have Sorry. to rip off my cake. Sorry. And uh, so anyway, wrestling. If anyone wants to see a bit of uh, the Electric Coast Wrestling, tell them tune in next week. Thanks for watching, and thanks to everyone in Mandra. And the name of the show is... Balls and All. And don't forget, when you're coming down, make sure you drop in and see the Maripana Wildlife And you get Park. to meet my duck. And I'm one of the best wrestlers in the country. <laughs> if you want good sporting apparel, make sure you go to Time Glow. They'll fix you up. And also, if you want to get on the internet, make sure you make a stop at WA Net. <laughs>